Hello and welcome back. This is my fourth video in my How to Create a Minion series, and in this video we'll be doing the texturing. Um, well, the next two videos, this one and the next one, because I think it'll take two videos to finish. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and add in a camera, so we can see what we're doing. And then using numpad 0, wait, let me turn on my screen glass keys. Using numpad 0, I can go into the camera view mode, and then using shift F, I can then position the camera as if we're playing a first person shooter, so a, S, and W, uh, and D keys. And we can just position this around. So we're looking at the minion to about like, about uh, there. And now I'm just going to go on over to the render settings over here and change the resolution to, because you can see we're wasting all of this resolution here. So I'll just go ahead and change it to about, whoops, about 800 by 800. Well, not about, I mean, exactly 800 by 800. But um, anything would really do because. At the moment, we're just going to be testing, uh, testing. <laughs> we're just going to be testing materials. We're not going to be doing a final round, but anything that's um nice and square, they won't waste resolution. I'll also change the focal length to 45 instead of 35. Those going into the camera options over here. Um, I find 35 is just way too low for me. And also heard somewhere that it's a very unrealistic focal length. I don't remember where I heard that though. But um, yeah, I just find it's way too low. Okay, so let's go ahead and add in some lights now that we've got our camera. So I'll hit Shift A to add a lamp, and I'll add an area lamp. And then I'll just put the area, this first area lamp, about over there. And a little higher, I want this, I want the goggles to cast a shadow on the minion body over there. So I'll just scale it up as well, just so that line is about over there. And then position it just so it's about the same angle as the camera. That also changed from Blender Render to Cycle Render. Um, and then change the strength to about to, uh, 2500, if memory serves. Let's see how that looks. That might be a bit too dim. So let's go to, actually, let's leave it at 25. And oh, and as you can see, I, I forgot to delete my texture over here when I, when I imported these boots for my other minion. So let's delete that over there. And then, yeah, I'll duplicate this lamp over here and then um, point it at the opposite body, the uh, opposite side of the body, sorry, not opposite body. And I'll make this one quite a lot weaker. Let's try 1500 and let's see what this looks like. Okay, yeah, I like that. That looks good. I want to make them both a bit stronger though. So let's make this one uh, 3000 and then this one 2000. Yeah, I like that. That looks good. Okay, I'll also go into the render options over here and then change this film to transparent. And that will just make the environment transparent, as you can see. Okay, so that's it for all the lighting. I think we can go ahead and drag open this, this window over here and change this to the node editor. And then select the main minion body, because that's the first thing I want to uh, texture. And then go on over to the materials options. Uh, material menu, sorry, and then add new material and main name. Now I'll name this main or this body, I suppose. Body. Okay, so I'm going to be using a very simple material for the minion body. Uh, I tried to add a whole bunch of different fancy stuff, and I just found a simple shader works quite nicely. Uh, simple material, sorry. Okay, so I'll keep this diffuse over here, and this is going to be the main diffuse. So this is going to be the main color of the Minion, which is something about like so. Oh, let's have a look at that. Yeah, that looks good. I'm actually happy with it. First time, right? Okay, and then I'm going to add in a mix shader. So I'll just go ahead and hit uh, Shift A, search, and then mix. And I'll throw my mix shader in the center here. And then add in a glossy. And then plug the glossy output into the mix shader input at the bottom input. And at the moment, it's giving us 50% diffuse and 50% glossy. But yeah, as you can see, um, zero is going to be um, one, so one hundred percent diffuse, and then one is going to be one hundred percent glossy. But instead of controlling this with the slider, I'll use a a Fresnel um, node in order to, and I'll show you how the Fresnel works now. But I want this um, glossy to reflect a bit of a yellow color, so I'll just make this uh, something about like that. 
not not too much yellow, but just to about there is fine. And then we can go ahead and search for our Fresnel, oops, wireframe, and uh, nope, Fresnel over here and plug this into the factor. And I unplug this by accident, plug that back in. And then using Control Shift, I can select this, and you can see the the output of that. Um, where it's white, it will be reflecting uh, more, and where it's dark, it will be re be reflecting less. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Um, yeah, that looks all right, but maybe I should just change the Fresnel amount. You can really see it a lot of in this area over here. Oops, I have got can't actually see the grease pencil in the render mode. So um, let's try 0 0.5. Try 0.6. Yeah, I have it with 0 0.6. Okay, so that looks good. That looks quite realistic in terms of um, when it comes to minions anyway. Okay, so that's all over the, the body. Now we can move on to the shirts and pants. Okay, so um, I paused the recording uh, yesterday and I was going to continue it today. But as you can see, um, my computer downloaded and installed Windows 10. So um, I didn't do anything to the model, but that's why Blender looks a little bit different over here by the title. And uh, Windows 10 is nice. Look at this. If I minimize this, you can see it has hardly any borders on the on the sides here, and I really like that. It gives it a real nice feel. Okay, so for the shirt and pants, um, I'll just uh, give it the material to the shirt and then we can copy it over to the pants. Okay, so I'm going to select the shirt and then UV unwrap it. So let me just go into edit mode and then into um, orthographic. And then I'll unwrap this with two separate UV islands. So if you don't know, um, if you're not experienced with unwrapping, then you can just copy what I'm doing. I'm going to select the loop cut that's the farthest from, you know, the topest one, which is this one. And then the bottomest one, which would be, uh, can't see, which would be this one over here. And I'm selecting it with Alt and Shift. And then, uh, yeah, and then I'll select this and then this and this and come back that. And then once I have all these selected, I'll hold down, I'll hit uh, Control E and then I'll just mark seam. And then with everything selected, like uh, U and then unwrap. Then let's have a look at this. Let's uh, change this to the UV image editor. Yeah, that unwrapped. Yeah, that unwrapped perfectly. That's that's fine. That's exactly what I want. All right, so I'll change this over to the node editor and then go into the rendered preview mode over here and then give the shirt a new material and I'll just name this shirt. Shirt. What up? Oh, come on. Shirt. All right, so this default diffuse over here will be the shirt color. So I want my shirt to be blue atop just a uh, going into turquoise, something like, something like that, and then of course we want a glossy shader, a glossy node, sorry, or shade. I suppose it means the same thing, mixed with a mix node, or using a mix node to mix them, and then plug that into the bottom, and you can see it's reacting quite nicely with our with our wrinkles and creases over here, but shirts aren't this reflective, so what I'll do is take down, uh, take the roughness up to about 0.3. We can change that later, but shirts usually don't. Uh, they usually have a lot of roughness when they do reflect. And then I also don't want it to be completely reflective um, uh, everywhere. So I'll use I'll use something to be the factor between the diffuse and the glossy. But instead of using the fr the Fresnel, let me show you what this looks like by itself. You see, the Fresnel is going to give us nice reflections along the sides over here. And over here, but I want there to be more reflections over here so you can see the wrinkles a little better. Okay, so to do that, I won't use the Fresnel, but I'll use a layer weight. So let me just search layer weight over there. And then let me show you this over here. We have the Fresnel and then the facing. So you can see what both of them look like individually. What I'm going to do is combine them with a math node. So I'll add a math node, throw that over there. This can stay as add, and then I'll just plug the, both of these in like that, and then uh, we can see it separately. Um, white being where we're going to have mo uh, most of the reflection, and black being where we're going to have the least reflection. 
So I'm just going to adjust this to about, say, I'm there just till I'm happy with the um, black to white ratio. Just like that, and you can see that already makes uh, such a difference. We Once we this starts reflecting, we'll see um, it looks so much better than the just the Fresnel. So then I'll just take this um, value into the factor. And, oops, grabbing the wrong thing here. Click the value into the factor, and then that looks a lot better. Okay, so the next thing to do would be to add the shirt logo. Uh, so to do this, what I'll do is change this node editor here to the UV image editor. Oops, that's the, what is that? That's the NLA. I don't do animating, so uh, I don't know what that is. Okay, so over here I'll create a new image, and I'll just name this shirt UVs. And then I want this to be a 4K image, so I'll have lots of re resolution to you know, to place a logo or to write something or, you know, whatever you want to do to the shirt. And then I'll just times them both by 4 to make it a 4K. And then over here by color, I'll select that and then just um, drop this A over here, which stands for alpha, down to zero. Well, at least I think it stands for alpha. Makes sense. Okay, I'll then select OK over there and then unwrap the shirt one more time. There it is. Okay, so I'll then, um, with all these UV, with these, both of these, sorry, both of these UV islands selected, I'll go ahead and export UV layout using this option right here. And then once you've done that, you want to open it up in GIMP or Photoshop, take it to a new layer, and then well, keep this in one layer and then make a new layer. And then in that layer, you can then place your logo at the center or maybe do stripes or, you know, whatever you want to do to the minion shirt. And then making sure it's on a separate layer because you don't want these the lines over here to interfere with your texture. And then save that out, and you know somewhere where you're, where you can um, access it. Um, obviously, I don't know why I said that. It seems obvious, but um, yeah, save it out, and then we can go ahead and um, we can then go ahead and bring it into Blender. So that's what I'll do now. So I'll just add in a image texture. Okay, so I want this image texture to be affected by the same glossy. So I have to put it in before this glossy, the, before the mix shade, of course. So I'll be placing it right here. So let's go ahead and place this under the diffuse, and then add another mix shader, and drop this in right here, and then plug the color into the bottom input, and then the alpha over here, because um, you yeah, remember to save your texture for your shirt as a JPEG. Uh, sorry, not JPEG, uh, the very opposite of PNG, because JPEGs don't save the transparency, and transparency is key to this. Um, or else what you can do is just um, color the entire shirt in whatever color you want and then you can save it as a JPEG but um, what I'm going to, what I'm doing is saving it as a PNG so then this will just this blue color over here will take place of wherever the image is transparent okay I'll then plug the alpha into the uh, factor over there and then open up my uh, where did I keep it over here and then I'll plug my I'll just open up my shirt UVs and this is for my last minion, so I just need to re reposition it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that real quick. And da da da, shirt UV, shirt UV logo. I forgot to select my minion. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and reposition. And like I said in the I think first video, I did make this a little bit too small. Oh, the shirt should have made it a bit wider, but it doesn't matter. Okay, just like that. Oh, what the heck am I doing? Okay, that was a bit roundabout way of doing that. Anyway, um, let's see what this looks like now. Um, hmm, why is it black now? Let's try right, uh, flip these, uh, now it's blue. Okay, let's see, we have a diffuse and, oh, I see, duh, sorry. Um, we haven't told Blender that we want that to be actual um, diff uh, color, so I'm just going to duplicate this diffuse and drop this over here where the color is going into the mix shader. Uh, if it lets me, I'll just do it manually. Just like, where's it going now? Bottom one. Just like that. And there you have it. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so, um, yeah, why don't the pants have, why don't the pants have the, I wouldn't give it to the pants yet. Okay, so let's select the pants and then or go ahead and select the same material. But if somehow the texture you painted for your 
or your shirt is coming over to your pants because it's we because islands may be close together or something like that. And uh, usually this this won't be a problem if you just keep on your UV islands, but what you can do is just uh, hit this plus button over here and that'll make it its own thing and then you can just rename it to pants of course and then you can take out your the texture image and your diffuse and just mix it and plug it straight back into there and then you can use separate um, separate textures for your pants instead of using uh, just one okay so that's it for the shirt and pants in the next video we'll do uh, well everything else so thanks for watching and stay tuned if you want to see the rest and don't forget to save your minion it will be very sad to lose it all